Hello everyone and welcome to Taekwondo Club. My name is Miss Hannah. If you don't know me, I am a classroom BT at Academy of Whole Learning. I am also a second degree black belt with about 17 years of martial arts experience. About six of those years I spent as an instructor. Uh, I train primarily in Taekwondo, but I also know a little bit of Hapkido and Judo, which will probably be mixed into these videos as well. Before we get started, I want to cover what we are going to go over in these videos so that you are prepared. I also want to go over some safety precautions. So first, we are going to be covering basic self-defense. That means, along with that, that means we are doing basic punching, basic blocking, a little bit of kicking. We'll be also going over some steps to make sure you are applying self-defense in a, the most effective way possible. Some safety concerns to go over before you start. I know we're all at home, but we still have to make sure we are doing this in a safe way. So make sure, number one, that you have enough room to move around. This is very movement heavy. You will be moving. You might even be doing a little bit of jumping and things like that. So make sure you have enough space. I moved around the um, furniture in my upstairs living room to make sure that I have enough space to instruct. Number two, make sure you're wearing comfortable clothing. That one shouldn't be too difficult as we're all just sitting at our houses in our sweatpants anyways. Along with that, if you are wearing any jewelry or anything dangling, at all, make sure you take that off so it does not get stuck or you do not hit anything with it. Number three, if you are on wooden floors, I would strongly recommend not wearing socks while you practice this and going barefoot. Actually, any kind of flooring, I would recommend going barefoot if you are comfortable, but especially on any wood or hardwood flooring. And then finally, only be practicing this stuff in these videos or with a family member or friend who has also watched these videos and has agreed to practice with you. This is not something to just be playing around with with friends. This is not something we want to use to impress anybody with. This should only be used to practice and prepare or in the case of an actual self-defense uh, situation. Those are the only two times you should be using this to practice or if you actually need to use it for self-defense. If you if that is all clear, we are ready to move into our first video. So here we go. All right, today we are going to focus on the basics of blocking and striking. But before we do that, we need to go over a short warm up so that our muscles are ready to go. To begin, we're going to start off with 20 jumping jacks. I'm going to count in Korean just like I would in a live class. But you guys can follow along in English or just listen to how I count. Ready? Let's go. Hana, do. Set, net, toss it, yas it, you got, you do, a hop, yo, yo hana, you do, you set, you net, you toss it, you yas it, you got, you do, you sumo. That's twenty. All right, bring your arms out. We're gonna do a couple arm circles forward. Starting big, going smaller and smaller as you go. And we're gonna switch directions, going arm circles back, starting small like we were, and getting bigger, and bigger, and bigger as we go. Good. Relax your arms, roll your shoulders forward. Two, three, four, five, and roll your shoulders back five times. One, two, Three, four, five. Good. Shake out your arms. Woo. You can do arm claps behind your back. Go ahead and do some of those. Okay. And bring your knees up. You're going to bring your knee up. One, two, three, four, five. Hands on your hips. Hips around. I'm going to do five this way, counting in Korean, and five the other way, counting in Korean. Ready and hana, dual, set, net, pass it, and the other direction, switching sides. Hana, dual, set, net, pass it. Go. Bring your shoulders back, standing up nice and tall. Go ahead and roll your ankles around. You might hear a little bit of popping. That's okay. Good. And the other side, roll, wiggle your toes as you do it. Alright, and relax. 
We are going to step out into our first stance so that we are in a correct position to start some striking. When you're stepping out, we're going to go into what is called a walking stance or a ready stance. That word walking is a clue. To start, you're just going to take a step forward just like you would if you were going on a walk. So one foot forward, one foot back. I'm going to raise my hands into the guarding hand position. Guarding hands, my cat decided to join us. Guarding hands have fists. So let's quickly go over how to do a correct fist. A correct fist, you're going to start with a high five, bring your hand, fingers in, and bring your thumb across. Now, I'm gonna show you a different view. My thumb is across on the bottom. It's not across on the top. If it's across on the top, my thumb is gonna get squished if I hit something. My thumb is also not inside of my fist. If my thumb is inside of my fist, that's gonna put a lot of pressure on my thumb when I hit something. So it's across the bottom, not across the top and not inside. When I strike, I am using my front two knuckles to aim with. That doesn't mean I'm only striking with my front two knuckles. That just means I'm using those to aim. When I aim, I'm gonna aim for something about the same size as a quarter. So that's a really small area and that matches about my front two knuckles. So now that we have really nice fists going, we are going to bring them into our guarding hand position. You might have seen something similar to this if you ever watched boxing or anything like that. One arm forward, one arm back. The arm that's back is about right at my nose level, right beneath my nose. And my arm forward is right about at my eye level. So as I have my guard hands and my walking position, I'm going to start bringing my weight from side to side, kind of shifting it. I'm up, up, not on my tippy toes, but I don't have my heels on the ground. I am very light on my feet as I do this. Good, shifting from side to side. I'm not bouncing up and down, I'm just lightly shifting my weight, so I'm really balanced. Good, all right. As I do this, I'm going to start counting, and I want, when I count, I'm going to move forward, and I'm going to jab punch. A jab punch means I'm using my lead hand, my hand that's further away from my face, and striking ahead of me. I'm gonna be striking right at my nose level. Ready? Hana. You might have noticed I jumped forward just a tiny bit to get more space as I do this. So, go ahead. Shifting side to side, and Hana. Dual. Set. Net. Toss it. Very good, that's five. So, as you do this, you might have noticed that I was making some noise as I punched forward. I was going, that's called salt and, salt and pepper. That's a hard one to say quickly. Salt and pepper shaker breathing. It sounds like you're going ch -ch -ch -ch. salt and pepper. Make sure you're breathing out as you do it. It doesn't have to be as loud as I am though. Ready? Hana. Dual. Set. Net. Toss it. Very good. We're going to switch sides. So I'm going to have my opposite hand now in front. And we're going to do five jabs on the opposite side. Ready? And hana. Dual. Set. Net. And toss it. Good. All right. You have now done jabs on each side. Jab means your front arm. We're going to add something into it now called a cross. Jab is front arm. Cross is back arm. So a jab cross looks like this. One, two, both at the same side. One, two, jab, cross. You might have noticed when I'm doing this, my hips are turning, my body's turning as I do those two separate moves. Ready? Back and forth, side to side, and hana. Back. Dual. Back. Set. Back. Net. Back. Toss it. Back. Very good. Let's go ahead and switch sides to make sure we're getting an even amount on each side. So now my opposite hand is forward and my opposite hand is back. Good. Ready? Hana. Jab. Cross. Back. Dual. Jab. Cross. Back. Set. Back. Net. Back, toss it, back, 
Very good. So those are our strikes. Next, we're going to move into blocks. All right, so let's go over blocking. Blocking is what we do to avoid getting hit by a strike. So strikes are what we do to hit something or someone in self-defense. And blocks are what we do to avoid getting hit ourselves and to defend our bodies. So striking, one, two, blocking is a little bit different. So when I block, I want it to be just as strong as my punch or strike to make it just as powerful, but I also need to focus on protecting myself. So when I block, I'm gonna start from that same guard hand position. When you start, you have one hand forward, one hand back, and I am going to bring one arm out and over. This is a block. Now blocks can be high up, they can be to the side, they can be down low. It's wherever that strike is happening at. When I start my block, I need to focus on doing one really important thing, and that is to set it up. When I strike, I have it set up from my guard hand position, but when I block, I need to do one extra thing. So I have my guard hands. Before I block, I'm going to bring my guard hands in, almost like I'm about to give myself a hug. This is called setting up the block. I set up the block so that even if my block isn't fast enough to protect myself from a strike that's coming towards me, I still have my inner organs, so like my heart, my lungs, and my face covered up so that if I miss the block, I'm still trying to protect myself. I'm not just trying, I'm not just letting that strike hit my face or my organs. So I have my arms up and I set up for my block. One arm's down in front of my chest and stomach area, one arm's higher up in front of my face as much as I can cover. Then I'm going to bring my arm out and over for that block, if I can make it. So to set up for the block, it's like you're hugging yourself, and then bringing that arm out to block. You set it up just to be safe in case you miss. You miss sometimes, we're all humans. Then I bring my arm out to block. So I know this is a little hard to envision uh, without having a punch coming at me, so I'm gonna grab someone really quick to give you an idea of what this looks like more. All right, so now I have someone else with me to help demonstrate how this works a little bit better. So when someone throws a punch at you, you are going to have that set up ready to go, that hugging motion. So if he throws a punch at me, I have my arms still here defending myself as best I can. So he's gonna throw that punch, I've got my setup ready to go in case I don't have enough time to actually block. So as I do that, if I do have enough time to block, I'm going to do one, two different things. So he's gonna throw that punch at me. I'm not just gonna stand here and watch that punch come at me. I'm gonna get out of the way as best as I can. So I have that set up ready to go. He's gonna throw that punch at me. I'm going to move out of the way if I have space, and then I'm going to block. So first you set up, second you move out of the way, and third you block. So go ahead. I'm going to get ready out of the way and block that arm out of the way. If possible, notice one thing. He has that punch out there. I'm moving out of the way to this side of his body. That's because if I moved out of the way to this side of his body, look what's coming at me next. There's another arm ready to go. So I'm going to set up. He's going to throw that punch, move out of the way, then block. Those are the steps. Now, Final thing, once I have that block out, I'm not just gonna stand here and wait for him to attack me again. I am going to back off as far as I can, and if I have enough space or if I am in a position where I am able to run away, yelling and screaming my head off for help, that's what I'm going to do. I am not here to continue this fight. I am here to keep myself safe. You are not in a fight to continue a fight you are in a fight to keep yourself safe and defend yourself. That's the purpose of martial arts. So he's going to throw that punch at me again. I'm going to step out of the way, block, then I'm going to run away, get as much distance between me and him as I possibly can. Thank you very much. Mm. All right, so when I ran away, you might have noticed something with my hands. I opened them up. I still have them in front of me. 
but the reason I opened them up was to add in something called the safety fence. The safety fence means I have my hands in front of me. I'm still protecting myself, but I'm showing anybody else that might have seen this, any witnesses, that I am not here to continue the fight. Like I said before, we're not here to continue the fight, we're here to protect ourselves. The safety fence means go away, leave me alone, I want nothing to do with you. However, if I switched that and had my guard hands up with those nice strong fists, that would mean that I wanted to continue that fight, that I was an aggressor. So this means go away, leave me alone. This means come at me. We want to escape. I'm going to tell you one quick story about um, Jackie Chan, if you know who that is. He's a very famous martial artist. He was in an interview once and he was asked, what would you do if someone attacked you with a knife? His answer was that he would run away as quickly as he could. Now this is somebody with decades of martial arts experience, but he is a good martial artist and he knows that he is not there to hurt anyone else if he can avoid it. He is not there to risk his own safety if he can avoid it. He is in that self-defense situation and his only goal is to protect himself. So that was your first lesson in striking, your first lesson in blocking, and your first little mini lesson in self-defense. I hope you found this helpful and I will see you next week. Bye.